Hello everybody and welcome back to X4, where first off, I want to apologize a little bit for the last episode. I was very, very frustrated. And it's not honestly the game's fault. It's really more my own fault than anything else. But I also want to provide a little bit of context around that. I have a very limited amount of time to make each one of these episodes, and I was basically out of time. I knew when I made it that it wasn't a great episode, right? And I'm pretty sure I even apologized for that during that episode. But I really, I just don't have time when that happens to make another episode or, or to try again or anything like that. So we're in a situation right now where I was hoping to have particular content, in fact, like two episodes ago, and it just didn't pan out. And realistically, when that happens, I just don't quite have the right plan sometimes. Right now, as you can see, we're in Nopolios' fortune, and we're really close to our Paranid location. I want to hop up over to Split Space, though, and go over a few things that I have done in between episodes here. We are still currently at plus 18. But that's okay. We're going to work a bit on the Paranid storyline. And also, I did want to address one more thing, but I'll actually get back to that. Because we're currently building a station up over here. Now, this is a contract station. And this station will potentially... I don't remember how long it takes to build each of these things. But this station will potentially get finished this episode, and I don't know if that'll push us up to plus 20 or not. I'd be a little surprised. I think it'll push us up to plus 19, something along those lines anyway. So I did want to mention I had multiple people contact me about the situation with repairing leaks. I am aware now that uh, it's a repair mission, not a, not a decryption mission, and... That's obvious enough from the name, right? But I do think that there is a small criticism of the game to be made in that when it tells you that you failed the mission, it says failed because you were detected, but you were supposed to be there. And I do think that that failure message is a little bit confusing. So I think that a decent quality of life change, and this is by no means a high priority thing, would be for them to re-term that from failed from being detected to something along the lines of communicating to the player that they aren't supposed to be decrypting this, but rather repairing it, just for people who are as dumb as I am. <laughs> okay, so let's move forward up over this way, and we're going to get to plus 20 with the free families soon enough, but it will not be currently. Flying to HE Gen Local Highway Entrance 01 Macro. Nice. I like it. Highway. Okay. <laughs> so we are actually making our way up over this way, which is not, which is, I believe, like right next to the superhighway. In fact, Auto we'll just set this Disable to active. Autopilot. There we go. Engaged. And we'll just fly to the rendezvous point instead. Excellent. And yeah, ultimately, it's not the game's fault that uh, I was having those frustrations either. It was more of a fault with my stringent schedule and the game... I'm... Okay. It's right below the highway. Now, where's that informant got to? I don't know, but it's been a while since I was told to come here. But as I was saying, it, it it was more a problem with me than with the game. Or more specifically, just frustrations with the amount of time it was taking to actually get the content. It's not the game's fault. I do still believe that there needs to be a... That, that there needs to be... Asteroid. Where is this rendezvous point? Okay. Basically right above us. I do believe that there needs to be a progress bar for for the uh, reputation. Probably, maybe right here. Like, this could be a progress bar in the background and show you how close you are to your next upgrade. That would be a nice thing to have as well. That said, I, I don't really have a problem with how long it takes to get the reputation up. 
It's just that I was running out of time. And more to the point, I was also having technical issues, not to do with the game, but just to do with my recording setup. And that was another big source of frustration. Now, where is this person that we're supposed to meet? Presumably, this is our person that we're supposed to meet. Concerning it's the only ship nearby and they're just kind of sitting here. Nova, Sentinel. So let's head on over this way. They're with the Duke's Buccaneers. We're not familiar with that faction. You seem to have found something. Hmm. The ship ID checks out, but something seems to be off. <laughs> well, well, how droll. He sent me one of his lackeys. Come a little closer, lackey, and we'll have a chat. How close do you want? Hey there, Gride. Why do you always choose such creepy places to meet? Let me answer your question with another question, my dear. How far would you be willing to be sure that your allies were up to scratch? She started a self-destruct sequence. You'll have to abort the sequence manually, or get out of there quickly. Okay. Defense drones. Ah, the self-destruct sequence was just a diversion. Hostile drones approaching fast. Helianthus. And since we're having such a nice, confidential chat... How much would you be willing to sacrifice in order to defeat your worst enemies and understand your true purpose? Defense drone. Okay, we'll take these drones out. We appear to have been slightly betrayed. It's not like that's unusual or anything. <laughs> okay, one more drone, two more drones. Come here, yonder drone. Ah, eh, you'll do. Defense drone. I'm eating piles of junk. Stop playing games, right? Defense drone. If you had riches, power. Respect. What would it take for you to give them all up? Watch out! There are more of them. These are rigged drones. Rigged to do what exactly? Our shields are kind of low. Someone really likes their explosives. Better keep your distance. Our shields are rather low now. Our shields are rather dead now. I think we can outpace these drones, though. Yeah, I'm just letting our shields regen a bit. Not sure what our if our if we took any hull damage there, but our shields were basically wiped out. Okay. We bought some time here. Defense drone. Yeah, we can definitely outrun these drones. So that's not super dangerous. In fact, we might be able to outrun them in reverse. They move at 126 meters per second. Uh, no, not quite. But we can almost match pace with them. Ah, uh, well, maybe. 123. 124. Looks like we cap out at 124, so they can move 2 meters per second faster than us moving in reverse. Okay. I'm still just buying time for our shields to regen at this point. 
Okay. We're at about half shields, so let's just move in. Defense drone. Defense drone. Not all of these appear to be rigged. Oh, they're firing back now. Okay. So there's still one drone. I'm going to get our distance here. My friend here doesn't oh. deserve this kind of treatment. Well, at least your friend seems reasonably competent. Competent enough to run a small errand for me. I seem to remember you came here to ask questions about the Paranid. I'll answer two questions of yours. We'll call it an advanced payment. Choose your questions wisely. Uh-huh. If we ask about her, we're unlikely to get any, uh, any useful answers. What will this war achieve? seem as though this war has just been going back and forth with no prospect of a resolution. That's not an entirely inaccurate assessment, but it's not the whole picture. It's no accident that the military supplies for this conflict have become one of the safest investments at the end of this gate network. You see, the two factions aren't really fighting over territory or resources. In the minds of their leaders, elimination of their opponents would actually be a tragic outcome. That's because they're fighting for the hearts and minds of their people. If one Pontifex backs down, even just a little, he'd be sacrificing his legitimacy. I imagine they must be quite desperate for an outside solution by now. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. So that, that sort of a perpetual conflict like that, I mean, to a... I suppose less militaristic degree, it could be argued that that sort of thing is exactly the dynamic at play in American politics. Or perhaps politics as a whole. But certainly more uh, obvious in American politics than in a lot of political systems. Regardless, what drives them? Someone looking at it from the outside can easily come to the conclusion that civil war is a natural state for the parent in society. It almost seems like some sort of expression of their psyche, always questioning and challenging one another's beliefs. Nothing could be further from the truth, however. What they so desperately want to resolve is what to them is an almost tangible geometric impossibility. Namely, there being two pontifices. The situation is utterly strange, tearing at their stoic demeanor and ruining their perception of their own culture. It's an aberration in history that needs to be erased at all cost. All this interrogation is making me dreadfully tired. We'll get your answers eventually, don't you worry. Now, about that little errand I mentioned. You should receive your instructions right about now. Okay, so the subtitles mentioned that it was... We need to find an old stash of explosives? Oh, that sounds safe. The uh, the subtitles mentioned that it was utter sacrilege, whereas the dialogue said that it was utterly strange. This is two very, very different things. And I'd be curious to know which one is the intended one, whether it's supposed to be sacrilegious or whether it's supposed to be strange for them. Whoa! Autopilot disengaged. Okay, Autopilot decided to try spinning. It was not a good trick. Autopilot engaged. <laughs> okay, let's go. As I was saying, the uh, the difference in this context between it merely being strange is that that's just an unusual occurrence, right? But it's not necessarily, like, mind-shattering. Whereas it being sacrilege for a deep, deeply religious society like the Paranid, that would be fundamentally 
potentially society changing. And that's the, the reason why I'm interested in the uh, in what which of those was actually intended. Because sacrilege is definitely the more uh, shall we say strong wording there. Anyway, we need to locate some uh, stashes Entering of explosives. While we're on our way over there, I'm a little bit concerned about autopiloting all the way there. But while we're on the way over there, let's check in on the status of our factory up over here. Yeah, this isn't a factory. This is a defense platform. We are currently about five minutes away from completion on the disk defense platform. So I don't think that this is quite going to finish up this episode. Realistically. But it will certainly be done either by the time I start the next episode, or it will potentially be done during next episode. I'm not sure which. But at any rate, we're going to head down over here and see if we can find ourselves some explosives, because this seems safe. Wonderful. Don't mind me, I'm just briefly tabbing out here, which is actually causing the sound to turn off. Is there an option in the options menu for that? I do prefer it when the sound does not turn off when we're tabbed out. But that does not appear to be an option. That's something I'd like to see added, actually. Again, that's a, a fairly minor thing, but it would be a nice quality of life option. There are some times when I want that to be on, where when it's in the background, it uh, doesn't. Oh, what do you want, Delbusta? You may be wondering why you're running errands for a maniac on the off chance that they might tell you something useful. <coughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, the first item on this list is finding an old stash of explosives. Hey, you've not forgotten about the task at hand, have you? What? No, I'm literally doing it right now. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Talbusta. Uh, oh, Auto the autopilot was engaged. not on. We got it on just in... Oh, hello. Autopilot disengaged. We got the autopilot on just in time. Let's just make our way over this way manually. Oh, nope, never autopilot mind. We went too far. Engaged. Okay, so as I was saying... There are times where I do want the audio on in the background, like when I'm actively recording and I tab out to click on something on my other monitor really fast. There are also times when I don't want it on, like when I'm AFKing it and I'm recording other things. So having a toggle there is always a really, really nice thing. Entering that said, if there can't be a toggle, I would prefer... Auto Disengage. Please autopilot. <laughs> if there if there can't be a toggle and it has to be one or the other, I would prefer that it Empty mutes space. in the background. That would be my preference. But for right now, there is no such option. Also, it uh, drops the frame rate when I'm tabbed out. Again, I like that most of the time, except for when I'm recording. And there are some games that have an option for what the background FPS should be. And again, I wish that that was an option here. That would be a nice thing. But none of these are particularly high priority changes, right? This is all just nice things to have. So let's come on up over to the empty space over here and see if we can locate the old stash of explosives as the uh, cat starts going nuts about wanting out. That's okay. When she's in here, Auto she's quiet. <laughs> and that's the important thing. Okay, where is this old stash of explosives at? Well below us, it looked... Well, no, that's not well below us. I guess we'll hop into long-range scan mode and see if we can find it. been a while since I've done long range scan. There it is. Hmm, it's a lockbox. 
That is a potential issue. Okay. So we need to bring in... Let's see. The Elite Vanguard is supposed to be docking on the Cobra. Which, it's still quite a long ways away from us, right? Okay. The reason this is a problem is because I tried to open a lockbox for a mission previously with this ship, and I just could not get the uh, the weapons to target the locks. I did create a specific weapon group for it, and I tried it with both types of weapons. But these weapons appear to just be too uh, bulky to aim at something like that, which is why I was hoping the Elite Vanguard was here. We don't really have anything in the spacesuit either that could do that. And if I were to just shoot at this, well, we would almost certainly end up blowing up these explosives. We're going to come in here and I'm going to make a save, even though that's going to take a million years. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay, so... The save does take a while. I mean, I get it. There's a million things to save in this game. But the reason I'm doing this is because I want to do a little bit of testing here. I'm quite certain that we're not going to be able to open this this episode because we're going to need to wait for the uh, for the small ship to get here, which it's still quite a ways out. I mean, it's on its way, but it'll take it some time. But if these blow up, well, that would be a bad thing. Let me get this straight. The stash of explosives is hidden inside containers that are explosive. Why am I not surprised? And yeah, you can see that the weapons just won't aim at something this up close. The little dot there? Bam. So this is not the ship to do this. And I'm quite certain that if I fire like this, yeah, it just misses. If I fire like this, it just misses. So we can't hit the, the lockbox with this particular ship. That is something that I have learned, and I do have a solution to, but the solution is not currently here. So that is exciting. <laughs> So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a bit of a cut in here. It's a couple minutes earlier than I normally would. And in fact, that's the second time today I've said that. Because my Rogue Tech video was also cut a tiny bit short in a similar fashion. I mean, this isn't that short, I suppose. But I'm going to allow the small ship to make its way in. And in fact, I'm going to tell it to just get here rather than trying to dock. Because that way it can get here a little bit more quickly. So get up over here, and we're also going to, I believe, need to cancel its dock order. Oh, I canceled both of them. Okay, there we go. Wonderful. So we'll get it here, and then we'll open up these containers. We'll probably move this ship to a safe distance to something like here or so. This should be relatively safe, I think. That's about a kilometer and a half away. That should be okay. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in here, and next episode, we may actually... Well, next episode, we're definitely going to open these lockboxes, but I may end up sending the less crappy ship back up to Paranid Space, and then we'll teleport back up here, because we may be at rank 20. But did I say Paranid Space? This is Split Space. <laughs> we may be back up here at rank 20 by next episode. So that's kind of the idea, I think, for the next episode, is we're going to open these these lockboxes for sure, and then we're also going to potentially place the order for the split fleet, and then we will continue the Paranid storyline. Yeah, I think that's the idea. And to that end, I would actually kind of like to tell the Cobra... Where are you, Cobra? I'd like to tell the Cobra to come up over here and just dock. 
so we can teleport to the split equipment dock and buy the blueprints that we need if necessary. Fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and put that cut in here. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.